The interesting option to me, if you're the Chicago Bears, is you need a quarterback who can make plays on the run. You need a quarterback who's going to be able to get the ball to your receivers, who's going to get everyone involved. You need a quarterback that's not afraid to stay in there, get hit. You need a quarterback who's going to bring some swagger to that offense because Mitch Trubisky and Nick Foles don't exactly, you know, espouse uh, adrenaline and, and, you know, testosterone and, like, everything that's involved in, like, you know, riling up a team. So you pause and you think. And then you realize there's someone down in the state of Florida who's likely about to lose his job by no fault of his own, mind you. By no fault of his own is about to lose his job. And he is about to become a very interesting trade piece for the team that he currently plays for. And I know you know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about, of course, the man, the myth, the legend, Gardner Flint Minshew II. Let me lay it on you, Johnny. In my crazy head, I cannot see any any sane person thinking that this should not be a serious consideration for the Chicago Bears. Because Gardner Minshew is a quarterback that can do all the things that I just previously mentioned. Mobile, he's able to elude tackles, he's, he's able to elude sacks, and he's able to get everyone involved in the offense. If he's able to make stars out of people like Chinault and DJ Chark, I think he can do fine with people like Allen Robinson, right? Now, if you don't believe me on all of those things, that's fine. Let's look at the numbers. The numbers will tell you even more of the story. And the story is Gardner Minshew in his 19 starts has 5,000 yards, 34 touchdowns to 11 interceptions. His win-loss record is 7-12 and with the one of the worst teams we've ever seen in the Jacksonville Jaguars over the past two years. That team was falling apart in the middle of the season last year, and he was the only thing that was holding it together. Earlier this season, we saw him beat a team like the Colts. We saw him do well against the Titans, and then he got injured, obviously. So, Minshew, I think, would be a great value for, for the Chicago Bears because you, pro you likely wouldn't have to give up much to get him because nobody's actually talking about him. Even though, day in and day out, you look at his numbers, you look at the way he plays, the dude is a stud. He, Johnny, 34 touchdowns to 11 interceptions in 19 career starts. Like, I don't understand how this man is not on, like, a, everyone's radar as a free agent or a trade, uh, you know, pick for people who need a quarterback. This is this is a guy who has the talent, who has the swagger, like, I, like the graphic said, over 9,000, baby, on some Vegeta shit. But he's a guy who can come in, and I think, because you don't need a, you know, big arm franchise changing guy. You don't need a Trevor Lawrence to come into Chicago for that team to be successful. That defense is elite, and that offense, all they have to do is be able to run the ball and move the chains. Gardner Minshew has shown that he's able to do that, and I think that the Bears actually want to take advantage of it, and if they want the most value for their top 10 pick that they're going to get, draft offensive line and trade a fourth or whatever it takes to get Gardner Minshew in there, and the dude will automatically have the respect of his teammates because that's what he's been known to do. And the dude will automatically make a difference. Because I'm telling you right now, you could put Mitch Trubisky and Nick Foles together, and they don't make half the quarterback that Gardner Minshew is. And that's the truth. They don't even make half the mustache. Hmm. All right. Well, speaking of. Oh, do you not want to talk about Gardner Minshew? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to try to find a transition. I didn't really have one. Uh, but yeah, I mean, at the, I think. At the end of the day, I think that Jacksonville might hold on to Minshew for a season or two to see what they have in, in I, I suppose it'd be Justin Fields. But I, honestly, I guess we don't really know, huh? But I, you might hold on to Minshew as an insurance policy, and he's a guy that you say, look, we'll move you on the offseason. You, you have to – you'll still kind of like what the, what the Dolphins have done with Fitzpatrick. And now you see that they're kind of switching back and forth. I can definitely see a very Tua like, a very Tua like introduction to the NFL, for whoever ends up going to Jacksonville, because I, you can't put a young quarterback 
in that situation and expect him to succeed right away. You mm. know, like that's it's kind of a very similar situation to what Joe Burrow is experiencing in Cincinnati. That team is just so bad. Like Joe Burrow wins because he's that good. But when you're putting a young guy in that situation, you're only taking away from the growth of that player. You're not allowing him to grow and he has to be the savior for everything that you're doing. You're going to lose by 40 every game. So I, Jacksonville, I think, is in a tough situation. I think you hold on to Minshew. I mean, unless unless you get bids, you know, unless you have teams that are, are competing against each other in terms of what they're willing to offer you. But mm. if I have a choice between a fourth round pick and a great insurance policy for my rookie quarterback, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep the quarterback. Can I ask you a question though? Why do you think there is this? I don't want to say bias, but why do you think there is this hesitation or, you know, this lack of interest in Gardner Minshew and his success that he's had early on? Just because he plays in Jacksonville. Like, I genuinely think that's the only reason. Is people don't watch those games. People don't care. They lose and they lose and they lose. You know, like, the, his numbers were all great, but the only number that people are going to care about was the 7-12. and 12. And you know that's that's unfortunate for for Minshew. And but seven and twelve isn't even that bad when you compare him to some of the other quarterbacks in the league. You look at Daniel Jones; his number, his win loss record isn't much better. You look at you know yeah. someone like uh, Dwayne Haskins; and his win loss record wasn't that bad. Is like the he's just when you compare him to his peers, he's still like he still has that ground. He's still maintaining. He's still holding his own against all these guys in a lot of these statistical categories. And if you look at the way he plays, the dude is making he's making lem, uh, what's it called lemonade out of you know limes or whatever. You know the dude is making the most of a terrible and shitty situation in Jacksonville. And I think that a I think a real t a really smart team is gonna take a chance on this kid, and they're going to do very well with Minshew. I think wherever he lands after he leaves Jacksonville is going to be either really surprised or they're going to be the smartest people in the room at those next owner meetings. Yeah, it's a very Belichick move, if you ask me. Yeah. Oh, oh, that, like that. Could you imagine? Hey, guys, thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Um, for more content, please like, hit that notification bell, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and everything like that. And just remember, keep it real.